Alright, trying to get the stream going here. And what we're doing today is I'm streaming all day for the Brave Dojo's birthday. It's his sixth birthday. Uh, earlier I was using Push to Talk. Now I'm going to try not to use Push to Talk. Uh, unfortunately, that might mean you have to listen to me in my throat or sniffle, and I apologize. I don't do this professionally. So, um, again, I'm going to do intro to moon mining right now. Uh, there was a moon that popped earlier today, and so I want to go over um, just different things to know, and, and this is a good way to make this, particularly early. So I am in a cure, which is a mining barge. So to, uh, to fly a mining barge, you need, um, sorry, come over requirements, you need Astrogeology 3 and mining, mining barge 1. Uh, and, and mining for industry five, I think might be a little bit annoying to get to, but uh, this this whole class you can do in a venture, um, but upgrading to the Cure, which has a lot more tank, is a little better, and it even has uh, some warriors. And you can make this ship. Uh, this ship has a lot of tank. You can simulate. You can see uh, with the adaptive involves it has a lot of tank, and then we can even tackle people and kill them with our drones. I'm being a little bit bad by using mining laser upgrades here just to get a little bit more disk per hour. And so the first thing we have to do is uh, for moon mining is knowing where um, where you can actually moon mine. So uh, this is an Athenor, which is a specific type of structure that pulls a moon rock. You can see it over here. And I am on potato mode right now for um, streaming, which I apologize for. But, so what the Athenor does is it pulls a chunk of the moon up, uh, just like you see here. It's a really cool explosion if you see one scheduled. And then on a um, scheduled timer, which depend, determines how big the moon rock is, I think we do two or three weeks, then it, uh, it actually explodes the moon rock um, closer to the, it pulls it up towards the Athenor, about 200 kilometers away. It explodes it, and you can see the asteroid belt here. So um, each moon has different kinds of ore in it. Some are, uh, you can see this symbol here. This is uh, moon asteroids. Um, and these are usually worth more isk, but you want, so here you see rare is going to be worth more than ubiquitous. So that's what you'd want to mine is the rare, um, any of the rare moon asteroids here. And then uh, another note is sometimes some of it has an adjective like this, like replete, and those are always going to be um, worth more and have, it's going to be more risk than the ones without the adjective. Uh, they also come with regular ore, and unless you're really looking for those kinds of ore types, it's probably, it's worth it to stick to the uh, moon ore, particularly if you're in a venture. Uh, sometimes, particularly for really nice moons, we'll have boosts, and you'll see um, porpoises or orcas or even a rorkel down in um, impasse. And if you mine next to those, you can get uh, boosts, which makes this per hour even better. So let me see if I can switch over to how to tell where brave moons are uh, popping. This will only be available if you are on, um, if you're in brave and you have. Uh, your core setup. All right, so this website here is the um, it's moons.bravecollective.com slash timers. It has the Active Alliance moon extraction timers. Uh, it shows you how much, so there's tax on moon ore. You get an eve mail every week and how much you've, um, how much you've mined and how much you owed. It's about 7% for moon ore, 1% for ore mined on moons. That's uh, just regular ore. Uh, it has your total payments to date. So you can see that's how much I paid over the last couple years. And then here's the important part. These are the different moons that have popped. So if they're grayed out, that means they've already popped. And then you have a schedule for when new ones are popping. Um, so here, YHN this weekend is really good because it's right next to GHAV. So for newbies, you can bring a, um, a venture over all day and be here. And then to decide which ones to that you want to, to uh, mine, you can come over to the Brave Infrastructure List, and you come down to the Athenors, 
here you go, public moons and their ore types. And you can look at these different moons. So we'll come down here to YHN. Uh, and I'll, I'll just tell you if, you, if you're only going to moon, um, if you don't like mining, I would still recommend mining any, anything that has loperite, iterbite, um, let's see, xenotime, so xenotime here, or uh, monazite. So those are the R64s, or the, um, I forget what they call them. We can look it up real quick. Those are the most rare uh, moon ores. I'll get the name shortly here. Ex I think it's exceptional. So the only skill that you need to mine is actually the, the mining for the minor ones is um, mining one. This one. So you you can from day one you can fly a venture and you can mine. Uh, to, to get into the procure, which I'm in, takes a little bit more time, but it's probably worth it. So if you want to use the T2 strip miners, then you need to train um, these different rare moon ore processing because it's only worth it if you're using the crystals. So it's exceptional moon ore is the R64. Okay, so then to mine, we're going to go, oh, see it over here, we have a porpoise. So we're going to warp over towards him. It's kind of nice to not share the exact same rock. So let's see if we can find a, a nice one next to him. See there on the repeat. So we're going to go over this pulley site. Uh, I'm not really worried about the isk right now. So we're going to warp over here. Target the moon rock, activate your moon miners, uh, put your drones out just in case any bad guys come. So now we'll just be able to watch our ore hold fill up and make lots of disk. Ah, so here's the moon mining uh, boost. So what this does is it actually reduces the mining module's duration. So that means this goes faster. So um, this applies the boost, this calculation here. So every 118 seconds, I mine 12,303. So you could use that to calculate how much M3 you're getting. And then you could come up. Oh, you know what? I never switch back to this scene. I apologize. Rookie, rookie streamer. <clears throat> so let me go back over some of those things. Okay, so I'm, um, you can see these different moon ores here. I picked a polysoap rock next to a porpoise. Um, they, they've got the, the nicer one that's replete, but I don't want to share their rock because it's, it's nice if you can split it, but on a public moon, it's not necessary to split them. And uh, he's giving me boosts. So it reduces my mining duration, which makes this mine quicker. So that's more this per hour. Um, you can see a quick estimate. So I just short cycled my miner right there. You can see that this, the Eve estimate, which is never right, is 123 uh, ISC, 100,000 ISC. So just for a short amount of time. And that's much better than you're going to get for a uh, regular or mining, particularly if you're in a procure or a venture in, in a regular anomaly. So all of our buybacks uh, take the moon ore. And so if you copy paste, you need to be in list mode to do this, but if you copy paste this, then you can flip over to, uh, this is one of the buybacks, although on its innovations, and they'll give you an estimate. So even the, so, the in-game estimate is um, was only let's go back over 123,000, but Alvatus will actually pay uh, 415,000 ISK for the, these six to four player sites. So that's that's pretty good. 
Um, so we can just keep mining that and we'll just contract it over and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. But the reason why this is so much more than Jita buy is one, it's difficult to transport these to Jita and two, um, they're actually using the refined values to determine how much to, um, how much this is worth. So the, the, the materials that you get out of this ore. Okay, back to the screen. I was off camera a little bit there, sorry about that. Alright, so we could jump into catch standing comms. Let's see. I think that'll record if they're not too crazy. Looks like they've got a fight going on. So we can listen to catch standing and um, that'll keep us updated. Again, if you watch the intro null sec, uh, one of the things we have going on here, it's got the tactical overlay, tells me how far things are away. Um, Oh, here's a good point. I like to make sure that, so this here is the moon mining beacon. So I select that, and then even on the combat tab, I wanna say add moon mining beacon to overview. So with this moon mining, usually it's within warp distance. So if you try to warp here, it's too close. It's 120 kilometers. So you either need to leave a bookmark by hitting control B at the exit here, or if you, have, I'm not sure why I didn't stay on the, okay. we're going to keep this up here and say, no, it says it's on there. Okay, maybe it's because I didn't have show all brackets. So now we have combat. Um, so let's go over here. So you're going to be able to warp. You can warp directly back. I could warp to zero at that, but I just want to make sure I'm within this ring because then I'm safe. So if somebody warped in the system, make sure you short cycle your um, your miners. <clears throat> so I'm going to warp back. Now I'm safe to dock up. I could also control B and put a dock uh, bookmark here so that I always have something to warp to. I don't have to worry about this moon mining beacon. Some of these wrecks, these wrecks would be okay for us to work to as well, but those aren't always available. All right, so one way to make sure you're maximizing your risk is to go ahead and use the cargo deposit. This is pretty cool. Uh, this is, I think it's about a year old now, but you open cargo deposit. So instead of docking up and waiting for the screen to load so you can drop your ore, you just right click, open cargo deposit, go ahead and hit transfer. And then you can warp right back on the field. This time I'm going to go for the, some replete polycyte. See if I, okay, this one's a little bit closer, so I should still get boost. And I'm going to warp right back on the field. So I'm 50 kilometers away. So I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is see if I can get within. Uh, I think their boost might be up to 20 kilometers. So we'll, we'll see if that works. Let me check in comms. How far are you guys uh, boosts on the porpoise? You can see I, I like using the left click menu. Other people don't like that. So you can always right click and see, right clicking is terrible. Keep a range you could choose here. I like the, the options that you get from the other one. So they told me that boosts were within 25 kilometers. So I'm gonna try to get there. 
Uh, I warped off, so I need to reconnect to my lost drones. Like an easy thing to happen. They'll go ahead and come right back to me. Let's see if we get these boosts. So I actually got out of range of this rock. But once the boosts go up, I should be able to reach it. Alright, don't do what I did. It's easier probably just to just to use the same rock they did. We're gonna come in here, we're gonna share the rock there. So you see I've got the range of fifteen thousand meters. Once the boosts go up I should have more. There we go. Now we got 26 meters. I'm going to switch over to the other rock. <clears throat> so now, now I get. Uh, both the uh, best of both worlds. I can have my own rock down here, and so it just won't disappear on me when, when everyone else mines it out. And I'm getting the corpus boost, so that's good. Uh, Sandrin's in stream is asking why I'm not a hot redhead, and in the far future, I am a hot redhead. So sorry to disappoint you, Sandrin. So you can see how this, so the replete we know is better because of the adjective, but you can see that the estimated moon price is all messed up. So this is based on region or geo, I'm not exactly sure. But again, going over to the Albedis calculator. You can see that, <coughs> excuse me. You can see that the replete center bar is worth almost uh, twice as much as the uh, regular, or sorry, replete pulse site is worth twice as much as the regular. Ah, so here we've got um, a frat member. So they're in fraternity. So they're they're hunting. So a good thing to do would be to align but I'm going to procure, which is pretty strong, but the porpoises probably want to get off grid. So if they come in, I'll be, I could tackle them with my warp disruptor. And if we have enough of us, um, which right now we're probably, for one guy, we're probably okay. But if you can get people to stay, then the procurers are pretty tough and can chase off cruisers pretty easily. So it's a good idea to ball up and moon, uh, mining together is, is really a good safe option. Yeah, having, if you got like 10 plus procurers, so you could take a lot of stuff. So Barry here is always dangerous.
how do you say your name? You have to. Uh, welcome to the stream, by the way. All right, so you can have awesome skins over here, so you can watch it, even in potato mode. Looks great. Uh, so I believe at 1800 we've got a um, we've got a stride up fleet. So I'll try to go on that and talk over the stream. It'll probably be delayed a few minutes just to uh, protect the intel. And at 1700 um, we're gonna do Sandrin is gonna do some super ratting for us. Uh, so if you are a spy, then you can try to hunt him down. So that this is your alert if you are. Happening to watch the Brave Dojo YouTube channel, you can try to kill Sandra. He probably, he probably doesn't appreciate me telling you this right now. Uh, so let me switch over to the calculator again and let's show you some different some of the different order types I think these are the ones I remember how to spell uh, so you can see that these are worth uh, each unit of these are worth a pretty good amount so monazai is worth 14,000 so that's usually zero time is right up there uh, but monazai is up high and then you can get even better versions um, the other the other thing that can happen with menor so just like we have the, the rare type that has an adjective uh, there are some that have uh, what's called jackpot menor which is I think it's more than double we can come over here yeah. um, I thought this showed it So I, I think, sorry, uh, the uh, you can see monazite, zener time, loperite, and interbite are worth the most, the refined value. So this, again, is not necessarily what you're going to get from our buybacks, but this is what uh, the refined value, probably based in Cheetah, yeah, the market region, the forest here. And that's based on perfect refining, which we have, you can get really good refining, but it's not perfect. So any of these are almost always worth mining. Um, and then Carnotite, Zircon, Polycite, Cinnabar are probably the next. Uh, and we actually have moons that you can... So these these moons are mostly uh, public. We have a few that are, are private. But there's also, if you come down here to some of the less uh, rare moon ores, if you really like moon mining, particularly if you're multiboxing, then what you can do is you can actually rent a moon. And uh, you have to pay a certain amount of the value of the moon. But then you get to control when it explodes, you get to decide when to mine it, and all those things. <clears throat> Sandrin is taunting all of you Brave Dojo listeners uh, to come and kill his super. It could be interesting. It's a good idea to be in catch standing, so you can see here I'm in catch standing. To do that, then you go to Fleet Finder, it's over here, Fleet Tab. Based on standings, you want to be, if you're in catch, you want to be in catch standing. Um, so Fleet Chat has information. In.catch is one of the uh, intel. And again, from the last stream, you can see that I have local open, so I can see if anyone joins.
Mute the audio just for a second, just so I can clear my throat without disturbing you guys. Sorry about that. <clears throat> All right, so here we are. Our pure or hold is almost full. So if you're in a um, Coveter, which it mines a lot faster, but it has a lot smaller ore hold. What you can do is you can actually jet can, um, and what you do to what we do to jet can is you actually hit jettison here. What that does is it drops a can right next to you. You can open it, open cargo, and what it, so it's much bigger. So it's twenty seven thousand five hundred. So you could just keep on moving from your ore hold to the jet can, and then you can bring um, Yasmos is a Galente ship that you can move ore in. Uh, let me see here. So this is the Miasmos, and what it has is it has a 10 percent bonus to ship ore hold capacity. So it has a special ore hold, and it can open up to 40,000. So what some people do is, particularly if they have more than one tune, or if they, um, so one thing you can do is, you have, if you have a couple coveters, you can be filling up the cargo c containers and then reship one of the guys to a Miasmos pickup, and you can get up to like forty thousand in three Miasmos, and so then that just means that you're on field more and you're making more. Risk. I'm going to go ahead and dock this up because I don't have any outposts. So here I am full. I'm going to warp over again to the Moon Mine Beacon. Open the cargo deposit, hit the right click, drag that in there, transfer it over. Uh, see, if I was smart, I would have bookmarked my particular rock so that I could have warped right back to it. These are my warriors down here. I know they were close. So, is that it? There's my cargo container, so I can work back to my cargo container. Uh, so re re renaming your cargo container is a good idea because a lot of people have them on field, and if there were bad guys to come, then helps clarify who's the who's. Again, because that was bad, I left my drones out. So I'm going to right click, reconnect to lost drones. There's my replete cinnabar. Oh, I was on poly site before, but I need to get the boost. Let's see. It's still within. So I need to be within 24. So I'll get a little closer than that. Oh, you can only ask that. You can only access your. Um, Before I go back towards him, you can only access your car container from about 2,500 meters, just like any looting. So you got to come back in to get that. Pick these things up, then I'll approach. Click here. So the replete center bar 
we can come back over here. So I flip back to this. So the center bar is worth just a little bit less than the employee site. So if I could find my oh, comms just told us that there is a new so this guy, let's see where he's from. Uh, Sephirata, these guys like to drop caps on us sometimes, so this could be interesting. But we're close to everybody. We'll see if everybody stays on the field. I want to find that replete employee site that we were close to. So I'm trying to maintain the extreme range here, uh, range here of the porpoises mining boosts, but still, but still be able to mine this at 26 kilometers. So it's going to be tight. Let's see, wait for wait and see if these mining boosts come back. So you can see I'm just managing to stay where the rock is in between these two, just barely. So after we fill up here, I'll show you how to go ahead and contract this to the buybacks. Let me pull up the uh, buyback information. So there's a number of buybacks that take moon ore. Um, you can actually make a little bit more ISK if you haul it to one of the moons that has reprocessing. So what you want to look for is um, you see this dash R. Let me make sure I'm still up on stream. Yep. So dash R, on any of the brave systems that have dash R, that means that that uh, Athenor or Tatara has reprocessing. So you can use uh, Al Humor or somebody else who has perfect reprocessing skills and talk to them. And what they'll do is they'll give you the moon goo back, which the moon goo is these parts, the cesium, scandium, hydrogen carbons. These are what make T2 um, components and ultimately T2 ships and T2 modules. And that's really the worth of the moon ore. So if you want a little bit more ISK, you can go that, that route and uh, get it reprocessed and then buy back the reprocessing, I mean the reprocessed goods, or you can just do what I'm going to do is within the moon itself, uh, the Athenor that you're on, uh, just to save yourself time, you can contract uh, one of the buybacks, and I'll show you a couple of the buybacks in the buyback website. So I'm not playing favorites here. Uh, they're all supporting the, the Brave Dojo in different ways for this birthday stream, so I appreciate that. Um, I'll show this shortly. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut this off so I can take a break before the next stream. Okay, so um, go ahead and return to Drone Bay. Brave comms can be fun. All right, so go ahead and warp over here to that ball beacon. Occasionally, this can be uh, this can be outside the range, so you need to check it. Uh, I'm gonna mute the it's comms. Okay, you do the comms. So occasionally, they drop the Athenor where this is a little bit far away, so you need to make sure that's not the case. Um, See, so yeah, I'm within, still within tether range, but sometimes it can be over here to the left, and 
then you need to do make a, a bookmark on the undock here. So I'm going to go ahead and dock up this time. Open my item hanger, drag all this in here, I'll stack all for convenience. So this upper right, this is important. You can only copy paste if you're on the list mode, which is upper right. Shift uh, Control C to select everything. Uh, I'm going to show it on Alvetis's website first. So with this quote, what I can do is I can go ahead and copy this uh, buyback value. You can see I made 17 mil list, um, and that didn't take me too long, 30 minutes or so. And then what you do is you kind of go back to the, there we go. You right click create contract Alvadis Innovations and then you paste that and then we'll go back to the other one so they want you to use this quote number so you copy this quote number just so they can double check what you're sending them and you paste so uh, you can see here, this is the contract. They're going to pay me 17 millisk for the ore. And you finish. So that's how you make, that's how you can make this. Uh, so, okay, so let's go back to the website. Oh, let me remake that contract because it was not. Sorry about that. So I'm going to delete that contract. Create contract, private, Alvadis Innovations. I have partial terms, so I don't type the whole thing. Um, again, I'm going to get that value that I showed you. Put it in the I will receive. And I'm going to get that quote number. Paste. Finish. And so then, usually about once a day, sometimes every other day, they'll go ahead and accept this, and I get 17 millis, which is nice. Okay, now I'll go back to the website here and show you the buyback programs. So these are our Alliance uh, buyback services. And uh, the ones that give Dumunor are the buyback and Alvanus Innovations, as a, and in addition, uh, Runk Wrinkle, uh, who is one of Dunk's uh, alts. He also buys Moonor at the same rates that Alvatis, Alvatis Innovations does. So the buyback and Alvatis have a little bit different calculations. So you can, you can use like the buybacks calculator here at and let me black you out so I can log in and not show you all my stuff. Okay, here's their calculator, so let's paste not that. Um, I'll just type it in. So one poll you cite, they would have given 6,500, and uh, whereas, which is almost identical to what Alphatis is paying. So it kind of depends. Uh, their calculations are pretty similar, but you can check if you want to maximize your risk. Both are good. Brave Dojo likes all buybacks. All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop the stream for now. Thank you, guys. Go ahead and hit me up. Uh, in Slack, in game, if you have other questions, I think. So next, let me check the clock. Yeah, in 20 minutes, uh, Sandrin is going to do some super radic for you guys. All right, see you later.